Hello and welcome back to another episode of KJH Uncut. It's actually called Uncut with KJH, uh, but I haven't filmed for a few weeks so I completely forgot what the title of my own series is called. I am going to show you Brush Basics featuring my 11 piece set that I collaborated with um, Spectrum Collections on. This is the 11 piece brush set. It comes with a little towel that you use to dust off pigment in between uses and I've got nothing on my skin right now. So we're just going to get stuck into just a good everyday makeup look um, featuring liner, Blush, lips, tr tricks, cheeks, bronzer, all the things. Okay, got nothing on my skin. Don't want to put anything on my skin. Sometimes I don't really prep with skincare before I do makeup because I don't like the skincare to create mixing medium texture and therefore compromise what my skincare is doing throughout the day. So I'm just going to get straight in and use my cream bronzer from Rose Ink. I'm going to use the largest brush in the 11 piece kit, which is the number two. The number two brush is a loose, um, slightly medium, loose, dense bristled brush that can be used for powders and creams. These brushes are synthetic, can be used for powders and creams. I like to mix it up really. That's the point of the towel that comes in this set is that you can sort of color switch from the towel, uh, but a loose bristled brush always gives you a really soft, beautiful blend. Like a soft brush gives you a soft, beautiful blend. Harder, denser bristles will give you a more firm blend, might remove more product as you're blending, if that makes any sense. You also have to try a lot of brushes and methods with what makeup you have at home because your makeup products might dry quicker on your skin um, or maybe they're not primed in a way that makes them move quickly. Like the density of the brushes really depends. The density of the brushes is important when it comes to understanding what textures need um, a dense brush. For example, if you're working with a quick drying long wear eyeshadow you need a dense brush to be able to blend that out if you're working with something malleable and soft almost powdery in nature it doesn't really matter a soft brush actually might blend too much and therefore take it away as you're applying it so those are just a few basic sort of rules and do's and don'ts as far as washing your brushes we'll get to that later um but obviously your set brushes of your makeup artist need to be washed after every single use my personals i kind of just color switch in this kind of thing every time i use and then wash them every couple days but depending on my schedule. So now I've just buffed all the pigment out of that and I'm going to set it to this side because I want to use one pr I want to use each brush at least one way and then show you alternate ways to use those brushes. So then I'm going to close this up and set it to one side. This was the Rose Ink Seychelles, my favorite cream bronzer. Next up, concealer. This is number five, Luminous Silk uh, from Giorgio Armani. And I'm just going to place it in all those areas where the bronzer was not placed to create contrast. A little here. And great, a little bit under there too. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my number eight brush, which has a tiny bit of a pink stain from something I used earlier um, in the week probably. I'm just gonna extra buff into there just to make sure. Um, but it is just a stain, it's not actual fresh pigment. So now with that, I'm gonna blend quite firmly so because the bristles of this are very soft. So therefore you can push a little harder to get a quicker blend. If you want a really sort of soft blend, slow blend, you would press less hard. And as I'm pressing hard, I'm sort of making it happen quicker, but I may be removing slightly um, a little tiny bit of product in the process, but I don't really mind because I can always go back in with more, but it's just something that's important to know. If you're trying to blend and not move around too much, you just want to press and tap. You don't want to do any of this. Also, sometimes doing too much of this around the eyes where the skin might be a little softer is a little counterintuitive to the blend because it might actually create lines if you're tugging and pulling the skin. So a little tap, a little press bounce is your bestie. I would also use this brush for highlighter. I would use it for contour in a very specific placement. Um, I would use it for blush in a very specific placement. This is um, this comes times two in the 25 piece set, which actually is gonna be coming back soon. Um, and that's why we did it twice because it's the most sort of versatile all rounder. And we are also going to be offering these as singles soon. This Spectrum collab that I did uh, was so, so successful that it's extended beyond its typical lifespan. Typical, most collaborations are just there until the product sells through or until the year is out. Normally a collab lasts a year and that's kind of it. Um, but people really loved these, so we gave the people what they wanted. Okay. So with what's left in this brush, I'm going to just feather it into the bronzer just a little. 
And then this is another great reason of why this exists. If there's a bit of bronzer in there and I want to go back in with concealer later, I don't want this to be tinted by the bronzer, so I'm just getting all the color out with my towel. It's a microfiber cloth. Okay, putting that to one side and also this to one side. Next up, powder. This is the duo fiber brush in the number four. Sorry, I probably should have said this is the number two. This is the number eight. So now we're on to the number four. And I'm going to take a little bit of powder, Charlotte Tilbury number one, and just pick it up and just press it lightly into these areas of the nose and under the eyes. I don't want much. And you always want to over blend the powder. So put it on, just check for any areas where the powder is just clinging into the peach fuzz on the face or on any areas that you don't want. Another great thing about this being an angled brush is you can really carve it into the uh, cheekbone, under the cheekbone, and sort of use the, use the powder to sort of almost further shape. Um, a duo fiber brush typically creates an airbrush-like effect on the skin um, because the bristles are even softer than the bristles of this because these bristles sort of end quite firm. These end more soft. Um, and so this is a great brush to sort of wisp very, very thin, loose pigments on the face. I wouldn't use this with a dense formula, meaning a thick, creamy, cakey formula would not be my choice for this unless I wanted stroke marks from the product intentionally in an editorial setting. Um, what I'm now going to do is actually go straight in with this with blush. Same brush. A little bit of the powder in here is actually going to help me almost neutralize the shade of this blush slightly and get a slower build from the blush. This is a Nabla um, Skin Glazing blush in Lola and I like that that little this is I actually just want to try and demonstrate something so I'm really building this slowly I've gone on about four or five times I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'll probably get a slightly quicker payoff because the bristles are denser so that's just something to be aware of I went over that twice I went over that four times and it's softer so duo fiber means soft you conceal a brush pick it back up and just blend over where I went a bit heavy with the bronzer with the blush so hopefully that gave you a bit of an example of what what that looks like, like both sides, both, both two different brush types applying the same exact product. Okay, so here we are. Next, ask any questions if I, uh, I mean, I know this isn't live, but ask any questions throughout. I'm gonna skip to lip for a sec. My lip liner from Vive, it's called Aphrodite. I love this one, it's one of my favorites. I've got a little bit of balm on, otherwise this wouldn't, transfer is quick because it's kind of a long wearing matte formula and now I'm going to take a little eyeshadow hybrid lip brush these are in my opinion extremely extremely versatile and I'm just going to blend the edges this is the number 18 and I would use these for eyes and lips combined and uh, this would be more for blending at the lip edge this would be more for packing on color in the center of the mouth um and I didn't grab a lip, yes I did. So for example, I might take my, it just took my 18 to blend the edges, now I'm taking the 15 to take a little bit of this um, color from, I find it hard to see, Sahara Velvet Blur Lip Balm from um, Simi Hayes Beauty to sort of get like a, a pressed on kind of look out of the color. And you can even use this to sort of blend and buff at the edges as well. It's a good lip. I like that little combo. So now, now that I'm done with those, I'm gonna immediately buff into the towel ferociously, because that's gonna take a lot of the pigment out. So you wanna take the pigment and the texture out. So now it's pretty much good to use on eyes. I wouldn't, on myself, I wouldn't hesitate to use that on eyes. If you have any kind of contraindications around the mouth or the eyes, I would not sw switch, switch areas like that. Um, but if it's yourself and you're good and there's no stuff, go there's no things going on that mean you shouldn't, each to their own, each to their own. No shaming on this channel. Okay, so we're gonna go back to those brushes again in a little bit. Next, I'm gonna use the number eight brush, the number 11 brush. This is one of my favorite brushes because it's a bit like a number eight, but it's like a baby version of the number eight and it's also pinched. So the ferrule, ferrule even, the ferrule being pinched here gives me a little bit of a flatter silhouette in that brush. And um, the same thing happens with these two. So actually these two are almost two mini versions of these two. Um, 
the 15 and the 18. The 18 is like a domed pencil brush. The 15 is like a flat kind of blender, shader, applier thingy. Pinched, non-pinched. Pinched always gives you a flat side. Non-pinched always gives you a domed shape. That makes sense? Okay. I'm like, does that make sense? I can't hear you, so I'm just gonna move on. Now, back with that number 11. I'm gonna go in with the number 11. I'm gonna take a little bit of this MAC eyeshadow palette. This is the Semi Sweet Times 9 palette. I'm just gonna take that neutral taupe, or beige even, because it's not taupe at all, and just press it on the lid. And just really sort of smash it into the lash line first. And uh, not really, I'm not, do you see the way I'm just sort of pressing it in and moving it around? I'm not doing any windscreen wiper motion because actually that means that you will probably get fallout and you're probably putting the powder all the way over here by doing that and maybe in here. Just pressing it on and packing it on is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. And then I'm going to pick up my number 18. Maybe take this color, this like taupey brown. And just start shading a little at the eye edge. And just do like a little, boop, bring it up to the top. And this is the brush that I blended my lipstick with a little bit, a little liner. Okay, and then I'm gonna take another brush that's in the kit, the number 17, take that exact same shade. I'm just gonna go in here a little bit. So this is like a small, blendy brush that is typically mainly for eyes. I wouldn't use this on lips unless I was applying shadow or powder to the lips, um, but it's a really great little brush to go into those sort of hard to define areas because they're small. Um, but I'm just gonna go in there with those and create some shadows, then take my number 11 brush back with a little bit of neutral bone color, that like warm bone that's on my lid and re-blend over the top. I could even take some of that bone color and blend it into the mix just to create a softer, look out of that taupe beige darker color so now we've got a little bit of drama going on next i'm going to get into liner my favorite eyeliner method is to take fix plus from mac and spray it onto a black eyeshadow it's one of my absolute favorite favorite methods ever i'm going to use the typical liner brush for this in the number 22 um this did have a little bit of red pigment in it last so i may or may not have um, a little bit of transfer, but there's my little puddle. I use this exclusively as a liner, um, and I think it's always good to have like a, a black eyeshadow that you use exclusively for liner, and maybe it's not Fix Plus that you use, maybe it's Aqua Seal, maybe it's Duraline, I don't know. There's, a mul there's multiple little mixing mediums that you can use, but I'm just gonna take my little compact mirror and use it as a mirror for my uh, liner, and I'm just gonna use the 21, 22 brush even, and just do a little sketch of liner at the outer edge of the eye. Keeping my eye open, because that's really important for the placement of the liner. Changing my position slightly so that I can get an angle, an upward angle, and then filling it in. And then, that's when this little bad boy comes into the mix, the number nine. So the number nine is a flat top eyeliner clean up brush which allows for you to go in and sharpen any edges and clean up any bits that you don't really like this is also just a quick first pass of eyeliner i would typically do this and then go in with a liquid or i would even go back in with more of the same medium to build it and the beautiful thing about this formula is that you can blend it you can literally smudge it into a soft sort of smoky shape as far as liner getting to be the same on both sides, I would kind of try and see both eyes at the same time instead of just one eye at the same time, one eye at once even, because then you'll be able to spot your other side's direction. And it's okay if it doesn't go the same every single time. It's like, it's like life's too short to spend hours doing your eyeliner in my opinion. But the more that you do it, the better you get. And the more that you figure out what your medium is, what your preferred medium is, You'll, uh, you'll have it on and flicked out in no time. So this formula does dry up on the hand, so you have to keep re-wetting it. If you are a slow worker, that's totally fine. Um, okay, I'm not mad at that, that's fine. Using this to just shape up the bottom, but I obviously don't want to tug it too much because see the way when I touch my skin, it pulls like that. If I pull it too hard, I'm gonna create lines underneath perhaps. So. Just want to be like little, little motions. 
um, and blend it. And I'm actually going to take this brush again, the 18, and I'm just going to give those liner edges a little blend. And this one's probably still nice and malleable. But I don't mind those little inconsistencies in the shape here because that actually is how my eyeliner should look for the eye, depending on where the fold is. Another brush that's great for eyeliner is this. This is the hybrid um, brow spoolie um, eyeliner. Uh, this is good. This end is great for drawing on small little hair like strokes, but it's also amazing for liner. For example, hopefully my focus is still on my eye and not on the compact. Like this brush actually, I think, is the sort of the secret of the kit. Because you can get a really nice sharp pull sharper than the brush that I just used because it's thinner and once it's soiled with pigment it actually gets thinner again because it's got product inside of it um so I'm just gonna really relax my eye there and just try and get a little bit more height on that area so that those sides kind of match a bit better okay that's fine this isn't about technique as more as it is about brushes and what you can do with them so we're gonna move on Two, I've shown you how to use this. This can be used for eyebrows, it can be used for eyeliner. This can be used typically for eyeliner, but if you wanna use it for brows too, you could. Um, and just like sort of do details across the face. Um, we also have, I think I've covered all of the brushes, but I do want to quickly show you mascara. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna apply my mascara. I don't think there's any brushes that I can really use to show you that, but I think I used all 11. Um, but essentially, the method to me and my brush techniques is genuinely just like use whatever brush that you want for whatever it is that you think is the right brush for that. Like there's no genuine right or wrong. It's a case of just learning as you go and figuring out what brush you like for different mediums. Also, if somebody's skin is drier than somebody whose skin's oily, you might need a denser brush for somebody who's dry than somebody who's oily because things on dry skin will probably dry in and set quicker on the face. Therefore, you need a denser brush or to blend it quicker this is tower 28 make waves mascara and it's on its way out I need to replace this one soon but it's still it's still doing good i think that's about it i'm just going to take this brush again that i used with my blush and my powder buffing it onto my towel off camera because i want a little bit more powder just there and that's about it. This is a good meaty video to sink your teeth into. So I'm not looking directly down the lens. I'm looking at myself on the screen because it's my mirror. It's how I'm sort of making sure everything is looking how I want. All my jewelry is from Gorjana. Um, they uh, kindly, some of these aren't these. This is a Dina Rater, but a lot of these other ones are from Gorjana. They kindly sent me a gift card to go shop with and I wanted to pull a few items so that it's I was wearing mainly the same brand because I feel like you will ask me often about what my jewelry is and it's easy to just say it's this brand. But these are all really cute and affordable. These I think one like uh, cost about $45 and these maybe about 55 maybe. Um, and actually they have a really cool, um, this is not, uh, this obviously this stuff was gifted but if it was an ad I would always disclose disclose something that I learned about them recently that if something tarnishes they'll replace it for you know no questions which I love anyway end of my video if I have any questions below if I flex my face and do my pose face my eyeliner warps so I need to just try and remember to just be still and natural thanks for watching if I have any questions below and I hope this was helpful and I'll link the brush set below